This week at the Maths Olympic Games in Australia, or the International Maths Olympiad, to give it its official name, mm -hmm. two artificial intelligences won a gold medal for the first time. It's the first time that AI has got to this standard. Uh, and given the strides that we've seen over the last you know, year or so in AI across many aspects of our lives, this is seems like quite a big deal. Maybe it heralds the, the first whispers of artificial general intelligence, this holy grail of AI. Mm. Alex Wilkins is here. Alex, fill us in on, on this, what's happened. What, tell us first what the IMO is for people who haven't heard of it. Yeah, so the IMO is one of the most prestigious maths competitions in the world. Uh, it's only open to 16 to 18 year olds. And to enter the kind of the full thing, you basically have to drop out of school, train for it. It's fiendishly difficult. Um, it consists of about six questions um, and they come from geometry, algebra, combinatorics. And it's so difficult that only a few contestants each year out of hundreds of thousands of kids all across the world get gold medals. And that's because it requires some really difficult reasoning and kind of complex analysis in the form of a long proof to answer it correctly. Yeah. So before we came on, I had a look at some of the questions that were in this year's Olympiad. Um, and what's funny is you can choose the language you want it to download it in. <laughs> but I found it basically the same. Whatever language <laughs> I looked at, I was like, I, I, even in English, I was like, what is <laughs> this? Still incomprehensible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. The, these questions are really hard to answer. And actually, it's been really hard for AI to answer it traditionally mm. as well. If you ask ChatGPT to help you with one of these problems, it will be kind of hopeless at it. Um, and so lots of researchers saw that the IMO was like a really good benchmark to say, if we can use AI to answer these questions, then that will be a sign that somehow the AI is doing some more complex or general reasoning than it's been able to before. And so when you say general reasoning, that is basically what we're getting at with AGI, artificial general intelligence, right? Yeah. So it's a hotly debated term, AGI. And yeah. the companies, OpenAI, Google DeepMind, they use it as this kind of marketing term. Um, there's mm -hmm. no good scientific definition for what it means. But you can argue that being able to, uh, to answer these kind of maths questions would give you some sort of more general reasoning than they're able to do at the moment. Mm. So to give us an idea of where we are, if we're looking at sort of the current models that we're more familiar with, how bad are they at these kinds of math problems? What happens if you ask ChatGPT, say, to solve one of these sorts of problems? So there's been tests kind of testing, as you say, ChatGPT or Anthropics Claude or any other kind of large language model, and they do pretty universally badly. They kind of yes. fail to <laughs> answer any one question correctly, uh, definitely don't get any sort of medal performance. Mm. We have seen examples of kind of specialized systems doing well at the IMO. So last year, Google DeepMind had two models, one called Alpha Geometry, another one called Alpha Proof. And together, these models managed to answer enough questions to get a silver medal level performance. But these were kind of very specialized systems. They had elements of large language models like ChatGPT, but they also had uh, what's called neurosymbolic systems, which are basically uh, using kind of symbols and code, and they were trained on specific IMO problems. So they weren't really general in the way that you could just use these to answer any math question you wanted. Yeah, so they were written in a, in a special language, weren't they? Uh, the programs themselves were written in lean. So this proper language that um, produces a proof that um, I am told it's e it relatively easy to check the proof, but to untrained the untrained eye is basically, you know, it's basically impossible to decipher. So it does feel a little bit like cheating when you use a, this specialized language. But this year, as you say, it's more like an LLM has been let loose on the questions. Exactly, and they've done really surprisingly well. So we heard last week that both OpenAI and Google DeepMind have trained models that are working natural language, kind of large language models, and they've both got gold medal level performances. And the fact that they're in natural language and have done so well at the IMO are things that the companies have really trumpeted as evidence that these systems will be able to reason more generally and more flexibly and that they will get us closer to AI that can solve complex and advanced mathematics as well as just be more generally intelligent which is if you believe in something like AGI as we said that's something that you want these systems to be able to do. Mm. Um, it does remind me a bit of um, back in the day when um, Deep Blue IBM's computer beat Gary Kasparov at chess. It was obviously a, it was a landmark Thing that happened then. But even then, at the time, people said it was a bit like cheating because Deep Blue had been really specialised just to play chess. It was a real number cruncher. Um, and it felt like last year's Olympiad, the Maths Olympiad, was a, a bit like that in that sense. But going 
won better this year and getting gold with this with a sort of uh, a large language model basis does feel like it's gone up a level. Um, so how have they managed to do it? So it's a very good question, and we don't know. <laughs> uh, and because we don't know, lots of people are very frustrated. So mathematicians that have seen this result kind of say, yeah, it's impressive, but we can't look behind the scenes. We don't know what exactly it's doing. The information that both OpenAI and Google DeepMind have given us is very, very scant. They've said, both of them have said that they've used reinforcement learning in some way to train these models. And reinforcement learning, if you're not familiar, is the system that basically tells the AI what success looks like and then lets it kind of figure out the rules of how to win, whether that's a game or something like protein folding. And we've seen it deployed with really success with Google DeepMind for things mm. like AlphaFold and AlphaGo. So the fact that we can't find out how these systems are working um, means that it's really hard to evaluate exactly how much of a deal this is. I spoke with Terence Tao, who's one of the world's kind of most respected mathematicians and all around very smart guy. <laughs> um, and he told me that while it sounds promising, the fact it's not been done in a controlled scientific fashion means he can't really assess whether it's a big deal or not. So it's kind of unclear how much of an AI victory this is. And I, I guess we can only speculate, but does this just suggest that maybe these AI firms have like brute forced it and just set that particular LLMs like completely focused on this one kind of uh, competition. They've just found a way to get them better at that. Does it really mean anything? So it's really hard to answer, as we were saying, without knowing how yeah. the systems work. But it is worth saying that to answer an IMO question correctly, you have to come up with a proof that's at least a page long. That proof has to have kind of jumps of logic and reasoning and, and really construct an argument that we can understand in sort of human terms. So it's not as simple as just answering a question that gives an answer like 52 or 42. Does it take them four and a half hours to do it as well? Or do they just spit the answer out? <laughs> so they they gave the systems four and a half hours of time. like And the they needed that time. I think so, yeah. So Again, they were we, real, they just sat there pondering. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, it would say that? thinking, exactly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and we, don't, we also don't know if the systems will run for longer, if they might have been able to do even better because they couldn't answer the sixth question, which some mathematicians are seeing as evidence of, okay, well, there's still some progress to go and something's not quite working there. So did they both struggle to answer the same question? Neither of them answered the sixth question. Oh, intriguing. Uh, do we do we know what it is about that question? It was about combinatorics. Um, I am unable to tell you exactly <laughs> what the question is about. Some humans did answer that question. Yeah, right? I think there were about some... five five kids who got it correct. Yeah. So we've, Come on. we've still got the edge on combinatorics. Just. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also worth saying that there's real growing distrust around what AI companies say and how that lines up with reality. So we've seen multiple examples now of how a company like OpenAI or Google DeepMind will come out with a discovery or finding. And then when scientists have gone back and looked at that, it's failed to hold up to scrutiny. So we saw, for example, last year, DeepMind released a AI model that claimed to predict inorganic crystal structure. And then when scientists went back and saw if these were actually new, they found that most of them already existed. Mm. There's also been a bit of chat in the New Scientist newsroom, hasn't there, about like any time you set a benchmark, you can fully just go for that benchmark. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you've nailed the, the entire piece. It just means you've managed to hit that target that you set yourself. Exactly. Yeah. These benchmarks, it's really unclear how much they apply to kind of real world use. And also, it's it's a bit frustrating, isn't it, if they're dangling this advance or this achievement in front of us, um, but we can't use it? <laughs> is there any hint that we're going to be able to have a look at this soon? Or is this just about kind of getting investors excited? <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> <laughs> no. So on the bright side, Google has said that it will incorporate this model into their Gemini system at some point this year. Um, OpenAI have been a little less specific about when we might get to use Closed this. Closed AI. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a chance that sooner rather than later we'll actually get to find out whether these models really can stack up to what they appear to be able to do and um, when i spoke with one of the google researchers he said that he hoped we'd soon be able to use these on real scientific and mathematical problems he even said that maybe soon we'd be able to tackle the Riemann hypothesis which is one of these millennium mm. prize problems that's basically impossible to solve so far mm. um in that interview there was another deep mind researcher who said to him that's a bit of a wild claim. Maybe we should not say that and just kind of walk it back to, say, some lower mathematical problems. So there's clearly a difference of opinion in mm. how big, even within these companies, they think mm. this deal, this claim is. Okay. And and just to come back to the holy grail of AGI, 
Um, I mean, if we take them at their word, let's just try to for a minute, then, you know, you could argue that these gold medals are an important step forward. Um, but I spoke with a mathematician who's involved in, in running and setting up the IMO. Mm. And he pointed out that this increment that they've got this year from like gold medal threshold, you know, just under to gold medal, isn't actually that impressive for a whole year's work of in, in AI. Mm. Um, and he says it could be more to do with just sort of the vagaries of boundaries that you set on on medal on how to get a medal and the questions. Um, and, and as we've been saying, no one, no AI um, solved question six. Um, so that would be the big deal. So we do want to celebrate these kids who they are like athletes dropping out of school. They have to train, train hard, you know, yeah. um, and uh, and some of them managed to, to get question six. So go go humans. Yes, one for the win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we've actually seen another win for humanity recently. Um, there was a world coding competition held in Japan last week. And OpenAI again entered one of their models. It's not clear if it's the same model as the IMO model. And that model came second. There was one human who beat it. And he said after three days of very little sleep, he was absolutely exhausted, but he was kind of proud to be holding the line for oh. humanity. Oh. Go him. 